from the Appleton Museum of Art in Ocala, Florida. I'm Miss Deborah, and I am so glad that you're joining us again today. The artists that we're going to work with today, Archimaboldo took this wonderful, very disciplined art painting and developed his own style. We are going to do a collage, which means we're going to take pieces of paper and we're going to cut the images out. What I had recommended that we use is a collection of ads. And the reason that we would use these is because we can cut out fruits and vegetables. When you look closely at the images, the portraits that Archimaboldo did, they're not ordinary. You can see there's corn and squash and pumpkin, and it looks like perhaps a green pepper. Obviously, there are some flowers in there. It looks like maybe even some wheat is in there. So he created the image by incorporating these wonderful detailed paintings of all these fruits and vegetables. So rather than paint them ourselves, we're going to use cutouts from advertisements. You can find them in magazines. It can be really anything at all. We're just looking for some shapes and some colors that we could put together. And if you don't have those, that's okay too, because you can always draw and color. Apples, that's an easy one. Two cheeks, okay, we've already got started. You might have a pineapple. I think in mine, I had some pineapple eyebrows. Another very simple thing to draw out quickly and then we'll cut it out. So I have my paper here. I'm just going to draw my image right on it. All right, so once I get my oval drawn, which of course will be the face, and I just added the neck because on the portraits, you don't want your face just to be floating. We want to have a, a neck and maybe even add a shirt or something. Okay, so this was the example that I did. You can layer as many images as you want. Here are his eyes, his nose, his bushy eyebrows, his cheeks are oranges. And, oh, and let's not forget asparagus for hair. All right, so basically we need our paper, a pencil, some ads, and a pair of scissors and our glue. Let's draw our oval. Okay, just a simple oval. This is going to be what we're going to work on. Now I've already cut out some things here so that I could get a little idea of what I like and what I might be using. And what I would encourage you to do, because you do have this big space in here, and to kind of get a jump on it, you can either color some of this in so that your white paper isn't showing through. Or what I found worked really well is just to take something big and to start my process with that. Now, this isn't necessarily going to look like anything. It's just helping me fill in the background. Another thing, if you don't want to fill in your whole background, you can just use the images of eyes and cheeks and eyebrows and make him that way too. I'm gonna go ahead, I have a couple big things here. Now, when I'm cutting out these images, I'm not very particular, okay? All of this hairy stuff, I'm not gonna worry about cutting that real specific. I'm just gonna kind of go in there and cut out some of the dark and just kind of cut it a little crazy so that I still get some of that because I kind of like it. But don't, don't put something aside because, oh man, I can't cut that out. Now the top of this paper was lined, just a sharp line across the top. Well, I don't want that in my picture. I want it to have some dimension. So I'm just kind of cutting in to create more of that leafy look. 
Now, something I would like to point out too with my scissors, you might notice if you take just a moment, my scissors are staying in one place. I'm not moving my scissor hand, which I'm right-handed, so this is my right hand. I'm moving my paper to make these cuts. But sometimes I see that people are trying to move their scissor hand and it will be much easier if you move your paper and keep your scissors in one place. Oh, wow. Okay, that gives me a good start right there. And it starts my crazy hair. Now I'm not gonna glue that down right away. I'm gonna go ahead and get a couple other pieces ready and then I'm gonna start gluing. Okay, I have some oranges here. That would be good for cheeks. Okay, now noses are kind of tricky. So I think I'm gonna think about my nose here for just a second. Okay, I have a cheek, I have a banana for his nose. And I like things kind of symmetrical. So if I have an orange on one side, I'm going to lean towards having an orange on the other side. It doesn't mean it has to be that way, but it's kind of what I tend to do. And when you're working with portraits, for the most part, your face, any face, is symmetrical. That means that each of the sides are the same. This side is pretty much the same as this side. Okay, so I'm gonna use the peppers for ears. I have this nice collection of oranges for his chin. I really like, I don't know how well you can see this little avocado slice. I mean, that looks just like a grin, right? That's easy. And my banana that I created that somebody suggested, I couldn't find one, so I just made one. Okay, let's get these onions down at first. I'm gonna use this green up here for his hair because I like it so much. Okay, so I have my chin. Now something that I'm gonna think about here for a second on my portrait is I know that your eyes are really in the center. Sometimes it ends up people put them up kind of high but they're really right in the center of the oval. So when I do mine, I'm gonna to try to make sure that I keep that down in the center area. And then your ears are gonna just come right off of that line. So I know that they're down low, not up high. So I'm gonna to try to make sure that I have mine situated about right. Well, the beauty of this is really, there's, there's really no right or wrong way to it. So I'm going to make an effort to pretty much cover mine, all of my spaces. So when I have a little space like this, I'm just going to go ahead and find something to stick in there. Like I have this orange. Well, I think that'll work. We'll just kind of fill that spot up. And if it's not 100%, that's okay too, because I can always come back later and add a little color to it. Okay, eyes and eyebrows, very important. Your collages are only limited by your imagination. I have some pineapples for his bushy eyebrows. I think meatballs would be a good addition for the center of his eye. Hmm like that. I'm going to use flowers this time. So once I get these glued down, I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to cut around the outline of it. Anything that I want to come back and work on, I can do that later. And I'll go ahead and mount it onto a separate piece of paper. Because here I might go out of the lines a little bit. And that way I can cut around here and make sure that that line's not real visible. Now, you don't have to mount it on a separate piece of paper if you don't want to. The shoulders here that I'm using, those were from, from a bowl of eggs. Now, I cut the eggs out, a couple of the eggs out, because I used those for my eyes, but I saved that bowl shape because it just looked kind of like 
a set of shoulders once I cut that bowl in half. You can see I'm just going to fill in a little bit more here and then I'll be ready to cut him out. Cut out and now it's going to be ready to mount. And I have black. So he's got this crazy onion hair thing going on. Eggs for eyes with blueberries, the banana, avocado for his mouth and just this crazy assemblage down here to finish off his shoulders. All right, everybody. Bye-bye.